Welcome back, everyone, to the Authentic as Fuck podcast. This is a podcast where I help the members of my community. Uh, I'm a marketer, and I also teach storytelling in my community, Night Owl Nation. And in this podcast, I help some of my members kind of through their branding, marketing strategies, content strategy, or any um, any questions they have. So today we have Sabrin. Sabrin? Sabrin. Did I say that correctly? Sabri- Sabrin. Yes. <laughs> uh, welcome. So let's start with kind of uh, your intro. What, what do you do? Where, first, where are you from? What okay. do you do? And then we'll go into kind of your questions. Okay. So my name is Sabrin. Uh, it's an Arabic name. Um, but you can call me Sabrina. It's okay. I'm used to that <laughs> by now. <laughs> um, well, I where am I from? That's hard to answer because currently I live in Canada and I'm Canadian, but originally my family is from Sudan, both parents. Okay. I was born in Russia, Moscow. My dad was doing his PhD, so I was just, my brother and I were born there, just randomly, casually. Um, uh, yeah, I've been to many places. Before Canada, I was living and did my high school in like UAE, Abu Dhabi. And then I did some university in Sudan. And then I came and did my undergrad here in Canada. So, you know, considering... You've, you've from, been all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, it's, it's cool. I like it. Uh, what do I do? So by day, my job is instructor therapist for autistic children. So um, it's I love the job. It's my nine to five. I love it. But also I'm a writer and I write a lot of things, poems, uh, short stories. Um, I love screenwriting. I just, when there's an idea, I write it down and whatever comes out of that idea, I accept it. <laughs> I go with my flow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, just yeah, fun. let me ask you um, before we go into question. Mm-hmm. Or maybe like let's start with the question, and maybe it'll lead there. So, do you do you, do you have a specific thing you wanted to talk about today? Uh, I have some questions, of course, but we can go. We can just see where it takes us, right? So, I'm just yeah. gonna tell you what like the reason I came here is. We um, the second week I joined uh, Nine Hour Nation, I had a, you were teaching us how to write a sale page, I think, and I had a question about. I don't, I told you, I don't have a business. I'm just a writer who wants to like, I don't know, write something. Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a screenplay. I don't know. What's the sale page? And we start talking about it. And you said, um, we, we, I specifically said, maybe I should focus on screenwriting. And you mm-hmm. said, um, oh, it's really, I really loved it. You told me, I'm just going to read it. Don't focus on screenwriting. Uh, let them come to you. Right. And I was thinking about that since. And the reason that resonated with me is because I am not good at taking the first step. I'm talkative, I'm loud, I can talk for hours, but I can't make the first step. I'm used to like, even when making friends uh, in my job, et cetera, et cetera. I'm used to like, I'm used to talking and then someone comes to like, you know, become friends, ask me You're something. Passive, yeah. yeah, it's. I don't. If it's pa- is, is it passive? Okay, I'll like you're it. reactive. You, I, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. For me to like to take the first, um, like step, it has to be part of my job. Something I really like. Someone told me to do. Like my first ever job was telemarketing, mm-hmm. and it was I was 18, and in that job I had to call people. See, I did this for a job. I, I did well, made a and lot how, of money. How did you? I loved it. Uh, and you, so you were able, you were able to do it if somebody was able, forces you. Basically, <laughs> if someone is like, "Supreme, pick up the phone. This is your job." Uh, so I did it, and I was surprised. I was surprised that uh, you know. But it, at this point in my life, I don't think I want to do that. Like going to telemarketing, but I learned a lot from yeah. it, right? So I really loved yeah. what you said um, uh, about that. That's why I'm here. Because I'm thinking, yeah, okay. I'm like that. Yeah. Somebody told me that, like, uh, uh, somebody told me I'm a. I don't know if you do, if you know anything about human design, but I'm a projector. Mm. And somebody told me that like projectors wait for, like, I don't know if I believe on the astrology or uh, human design okay, or something okay, like that, okay. but okay. they say that projectors tend to wait for things to come, right, rather than going chasing stuff, right? Okay. So, and for me, that's how my life has always been. Mm. It's whenever I go and try to chase something, it never happens. Yeah, it goes away. Yeah. Yeah. 
But then when the the biggest opportunities in my life all came to me Mm. as a result of me just doing what I want to do or something like that. Yes, yes. So I can relate to that. (laughs) This is me. And I've been annoying it uh, because I was thinking, am I waiting for life to happen to me or am I, I am creating the life I want kind of like a, you know, but looking at my life, I've always been focused on what I'm doing, whether it's a job, it's a school, it's like just, you know, doing things for my family. And then through that thing, something come to me, it aligns with everything I want. That being said, if I don't want something, I easily say no, right? And I just feel like those things come easily to me, the me stressing over them. And I'm not sure if that's right, but that's how it has been for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's how life works. Works, yeah. Usually, um, so, okay, let's, let's, let's continue. Um, okay. Let me ask you something. Do you, do you write in your free time? Yes, all the time. What do you write? <sighs> okay, so I write poems sometimes depends on the idea okay let's say i heard the word right and i was like uh oh, i'm gonna write a poem this word inspired me or let's say i mm. i saw like something i really love is trees and when like a, a sun is behind a tree i don't know what happens to me i just start taking pictures etc and then i go write mm. about that right and then some days like two days ago i was like thinking uh, and I thought about a cat in a bookstore and she's like kind of a keeper of the fairy tale land, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's a story, right? And I don't know where it's going to take me, but I wrote the idea down to write it someday. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm thinking maybe. So this what, is... what do you write? Can I ask you like when you write down an idea, mm-hmm. like we're, what, we're what is, what are you writing? Yeah. Is it like just the word cat or is no, it no, like... I can't read it. Can I read it yeah, for yeah, you? Please. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I wrote a cat at a bookstore that works as fairy tale protector at night. Magical whiskers. I don't even know if whiskers is a word. Anyways, um, and then look into like first story maybe about Cinderella. Okay, so something I really didn't like about Cinderella growing up. So when I when I see stuff, some things annoy me. And I'm like, why is mm-hmm. this? I love human experiences, right? And I'm like, um, why is the story going this way? So what I was mm-hmm. thinking all the time, why didn't Cinderella just leave? Her dad was not there. Why is she staying there? This is not her real mom. This is not her real sisters. Mm-hmm. I know there's a stepsister, et cetera, mm-hmm. but they're not treating her well. She could just left. Mm-hmm. Why did she wait for blah, blah? So while I, when I wrote the story about the cat, I remembered what I was thinking about Cinderella. And I was like, maybe I could with these two together. Mm-hmm. So I wrote it. And then uh, the reason I write this is I don't want to forget about the idea. Because right now, while I had this idea, I'm working, I'm like, you know how we have the writers group at Night Owl Nation with Ray and everyone else? Yeah. Awesome, awesome group. <laughs> they make, they, they just hold oh, me accountable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I joined yeah. and we meet on Saturdays and I was like, I've been thinking about this movie for a while and I started writing it. I'm, I'm, like the first day we met, I wrote, what I do is I write the characters to know what's behind like kind of like a background for each character Mm -hmm. and then i start writing which i don't know if this is the right way of writing screen play but this Mm -hmm. is what i do and i i rather we talked about frameworks right (laughs) so i rather you know start working and then um edit later than losing the ideas and the flow of 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 the movie or whatever i'm writing or the story in my head so what i did is i wrote the characters the settings and then my questions for research because I don't know everything. <laughs> Even if you're writing a story, you need like, and the story probably is going, the setting is probably going to be in the US or Canada. So even though I live here, I still need to research on people and stuff like that. So, and I'm just writing this and I'm, I think I'm on scene five or something like that. And I don't know how long is the movie or like whatever, but I'm writing it, right? So I'm writing this. I thought about the story. I just uploaded a poem I wrote yesterday on Instagram. So that's how it is. It's not, I don't know if it's or. What's the poem about? Oh, can I read it? Yeah. Sure. (laughs) 
feel like I'm reading. Okay, so <laughs> the poem says, a human, a hummingbird, a running river, a tall old tree, a high mountain, a cloud in the sky. I want to be all yet be one. That's it. Mm. <laughs> so the and poem, what inspired you to write that? Like what? Oh yeah. What inspired me is the fact that I want to be everything. Like I was in medical school. I love medicine. And uh, while I was in medical school, of course, like at some points I was writing and I love science. I have a degree in neuroscience and mental health with a minor in psychology, mm. hence my job. Right. And I've always thought this is going to be where I'm going in life. I'll be a doctor. But then what happened in, in my 20s is that I found out that I am uh, I have an IgA nephropathy. It's an autoimmune disease <laughs> that has been like um, basically in my body for a while. And I didn't know until I was 21 and it was aggressive. So I found myself the patient, the person who goes to the hospital and I've never thought I'll be the one. So I found myself that person, which was, it's not a happy experience, but it's a humbling and you know, it taught me so much empathy and I didn't know that I'm such an empathic person, but it mm -hmm. just happened to me. One of the things that happened to me in life. And this is a, like a whole, I, I actually want to write a book about this. Do you ever write about yourself? Yes, all the time. Your own story? Yes, all the okay. time. <laughs> so this is and one of the stories. where do you write it? Like just in your journal or something? Um, I write, I write, um, I write, in, I write, Here's how I write, because before I used to be like, oh, I'll get home and to my book and write, right? So my new system is to write wherever I am, whatever I have. If I have a book, I'll write, like a notebook, I'll write. If it's my phone, I'll write on my notes. If, it's, mm -hmm. if I'm on my computer, I'll write on my computer. Yeah. And then at some point, and I remember all my writing. So if I want to collect them together, I just do that. Mm -hmm. And because of my uh, chronic disease that actually, the reason I didn't finish medicine is because by the time I was finishing uh, my last year university, my doctor said, well, your kidneys are failing. And in 2019, I had to do dialysis. And then all the hospitals closed for COVID. Even though I had a donor, shout out to her. She will probably be watching, my biggest supporter, my friend. Um, yeah, we couldn't do the surgery. So I had to wait for two years at home, not working. I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. It was dangerous to work for someone with who's so sick like me, right? And this is when I start thinking about taking writing seriously uh, because I was like, what am I doing? I don't want to be a doctor. Uh, like, I, you know, it's just like, I I know when I tell people that I had kidney failure and dialysis and kidney transplant eventually, they're like, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. that pity face, it annoys me. But <laughs> um, the truth is, this is one of the best things that happened to me, even though it was so painful, even though um, I thought I'm dying. Like I remember us, like, because in the hospital, I wasn't allowed to see anyone because it was during COVID, you know? They opened the, the uh, surgery rooms for, I don't know, they, they, they even shut it down like one week or while I was leaving the hospital. I was just lucky that I got in that slot. Like there's a, there's a night where I thought I'm dying. That's it. Like I messaged my brother. I was like, no, I, yeah, I'm not going back to Dallas. That's it. Like, you know, if this doesn't, does not work, I don't know what to do. And one of my biggest supporters, <laughs> he was like, oh, no, we love you. Stay with us. And, you know, that connection. Um, you know, d going through this, it just gave me an insight to just do what I want. It doesn't matter. Just do what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you just got a chance to live. So, Can I ask you, um, what, when did you start writing? And what inspired you? Like, who, what's? Or well, okay. let me re rephrase that. Do you have okay. an is somebody who inspires you, like a writer or oh. somebody you look up to? Many writers. Okay. Uh, I started writing because I started reading. My mom got me short stories, you know, for the kids, and this is how I learned how to read. I've been reading since. 
I know you're not a reader. I saw it in one of your yeah. Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm also not really a writer. <laughs> okay. so I'm, I'm trying to understand the, the process. You know, where, where your, your uh, okay. passion and your, yeah. <sighs> okay, so I started reading since I was a kid to the point where... Um, <laughs> okay, so what happens when I'm reading? I, you know how people read the, um, the sentences? I go there. My whole mind creates the scene. Oops, creates the scene, and everyone. And sometimes I read a book. They make a movie out of it. I don't accept it because the the setting and people don't look like what I want. I think actually most people do that. Most people. <laughs> I I actually think that's the reason why most people prefer books over, over movies. movies. Because Not all books. Like I can't. For example, I didn't read Harry Potter, so I watched the movie. I can't. I can't imagine. It's overwhelming for me. Yeah. The world is overwhelming. I think it's it's. Uh, Kiss kiss. It's part of the fun, the, yeah. Like imagining it, imagining that in your head is kind of like I think part of the reason why. Yeah, people I get love just books. like sucked into it. Yeah. So I, I, I have, I've been reading uh, the people I love. I don't know if you will know most of them are like Arabs and Sudanese, but one of mm -hmm. the writers, uh, I love Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a poet. Um, I love her so much. She has I don't I don't memorize everything, but she has a poem. It's, I think it's called it's "Till I Rise," mm -hmm. and yeah, she's the one who said there's no greater agony than, um, than than like holding a story inside you or something like that. that or, yes, but, I don't know if she said that, but that's that's who I am. <laughs> I can't hold a story. I can't hold anything, and that's I think one of the reasons that was annoying me all my life is that I had stories to tell and I and I, I decided not to take that route. And since I was a I remember in grade um, five or six, one of my teachers said, You're a writer. And I didn't believe it. I, like, I feel like so here here's what I think. Mm. So writer is a creator, right? Because there's writers, there's filmmakers, there's also mm. designers, artists, there's mm. people who create things, right? Mm. Um I think ultimately what, I mean, obviously everyone has the medium mm. that they create in, like a sculptor or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, I think the the root passion, the, the root inspiration is not coming from the writing, but Story. having something to say, right? <laughs> like putting having something to say about the world, maybe, mm. and then putting it out there so that yes. for, for, for others to see or something like that, maybe. Is definitely um, that. <laughs> yeah. For me, at least, because I always have something to say and I see mm -hmm. differently. Like, you know, how did Cinderella just elope and live her life? Maybe she wouldn't have gotten mm -hmm. the prince, but mm -hmm. maybe the adventure would have been much more fun for me, at least. The dresses were mm -hmm. fine, but, <laughs> you know, that's how. What, I what think. about when you were young? What, what did you feel that way when you were younger? Yeah. You know, I have you read Hamlet? I don't know. Maybe you had it in no, school. No, but I know. I know okay. the story. So, <laughs> just trigger warning because <laughs> there's a, a self harm. I was thinking always, why did the princess just, you know, why why is she upset? Why did she kill herself? Like, what's happening? Why does she like, uh, like what what's happening? You know, and I understand from mental health point of mm -hmm. view and everything else, you know. But I always like I've always felt that way and. I think for me, it was, I had to keep it down or like not talk mm -hmm. about it because everyone else was feeling like, oh yeah, she's sad about this or, oh yeah, she got the prince, you know, and mm -hmm. oh yeah, she blah, blah, blah. And it's not just about that. Like a lot, a lot of things, not just relationship, you know, a lot, a lot of things. And I just had to keep it down. I'm thinking something's wrong with me because I don't understand or this is not how I feel. Like even mm -hmm. like, uh, when I was in med school with my friends or my sisters would be like, oh, you're so harsh. You're so mean. Like, mm -hmm. you just have mm -hmm. no feelings. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm pretty sure I have feelings because I love you. You're telling me you're harsh, you're mean, and I still love you. <laughs> so that's a feeling, right? But I've always had, like, um, another way of seeing things, like a different point of view. And I lately accepted that about myself. Accepted, like... It's not being different. It's just everyone has an opinion. So it's okay to have mine. It's okay mm -hmm. to talk about it. 
so is there something that you're struggling with or you're right now like what okay. what, what's the next so, step <laughs> <laughs> like why is she here okay um I have questions. No, I think it was important that we you give we, me all the background uh, information. Okay. So now let's talk about the. <laughs> of course. Now that yeah. we cover the past, let's talk about the future. <laughs> okay, so I did start the Instagram page yeah. ju just to share as a poet, mm -hmm. uh, because I thought, okay, I'll write my movies and just try to sell them or make them or whatsoever. Which is, I have no idea how that industry works. Anyways, uh, all I want is to write, actually, um, which is not good. For for someone who wants to run a business. I don't know if it's good or not, but in my opinion, it's not. Um, from like being a night owl nation and what you told me, I thought, and also when we talked about weaknesses, I I think it was in the q and I I told you, yeah, like I'm talkative and loud and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And the first thing you said, start a podcast. And this is what and this is what I did. I bought this mic. I was just gonna say that again. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Because it like, seems okay. like it just from talking to you for like you know the last fifteen minutes, it sounds like you have a lot to say. Yeah. So I think you need um I think you need a you need some platform or some medium to mm, <laughs> let all of that out first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah that's what i, I mean like thinking. when i say you have something to say meaning like you you have unique perspective you have ideas you Thank have you. things that now i got you you I need to you. get out there yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's what uh, that's what i was thinking is to start a podcast and um you know i wrote a concept down um but it's just you know it's just scary I, and i've watched all there's there there are weeks in night owl nation where was it an assignment? I watched all of that, but I'm still, and I decided to start messy. But what do you think you're scared, most scared of? <sighs> Honestly, showing my face and being here is the mm. first step, not just being here. Um, before that, just joining Night Owl Nation and coming with an open mic, uh, sorry, camera to the meetings. That's a huge step for me. I know I I don't know if I talked about it, but that's a huge step. I don't actually. You I know you can do a podcast without the video too. I know, but I <laughs> I want to like take that. I want to create content, right? I want to because one of the things that I'm struggling with is posting on Instagram my writings because I criticize myself day and night like this poem i just shared with you has been here there like for the last year on my phone sitting and i didn't post it because i didn't like it and i would start for you actually mm -hmm. the the thing that you should constantly do mm. i think is tweet meaning instead of writing it on your journal mm. tweeting it just write it on your tweet like just write it on your twitter mm. And you don't even have to post it. You just save it as a draft. Okay. And nice. then just keep writing it, right? And then once you're ready, then post them. <laughs> but I mean, I think the goal is, I think you should get to a point where when you have an idea, just mm. tweet it and post and, it. And go with it. Mm. it. And it's okay if it's wrong. And then let's say three months later, you have, you've refined that idea. Mm. Just tweet it again. The same, same one, the refined version of it, right? And then three months later, let's say you refined it a little more. Tweet it again. Mm. That, that, that's that's actually just, what I'm... I use Twitter as my notepad, basically. Okay. So I, I'm tweeting the same thing I said previously again and again. But it's re more. It's a little bit more refined. It's more... I, you know, I've I figured out a little bit more about that <laughs> idea. So I, I, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what you do. Yeah, but it, like literally in the sense that you you just have to imagine that nobody's seeing it, oh, and hard. <laughs> guarantee you nobody will see it in the beginning. Mm. <laughs> you don't you don't really have to know about worry about that because for the first few, few months nobody will see it. Mm. Okay. Do you understand what I mean? That's just how it goes. <laughs> That's how life is. <laughs> um, okay, I'll. But there's another thing I'm struggling with in terms of Twitter, and I can't. It's not like I can't. I, I get overwhelmed by social media and having a couple of accounts. That's why I have only Instagram. Because in 20, I don't even have, 
personal accounts anymore. I deleted them in 2019. And I just like only have an Instagram because I just, I simply found out that I get overwhelmed. And I, this, by being overwhelmed and doing a couple of things. Um, I think on Twitter, you should just post and ghost. I, I always, ghost. I never tell people, to, <laughs> I never tell people to do that. Mm. But for you, that might actually be helpful. And turn off my just, notification. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just okay. every time you want to say something, like to literally treat it as like a no, no, notes app. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just every time you open it, just hit tweet, write oh. down whatever, post, okay. and then close it. Close it. <laughs> and the next time, I get, you know what I mean? Now, and then I'm now brave. you just I'll have do like that. A, I'll do that. I'll do that. I don't mind doing it. <laughs> Like, and don't, don't read anything. Don't look, read other people's tweets. Don't read any comments. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Just post and that's I'll it. I'll right? try it. And, and I think that might be a good exercise of like you dipping the toes of, because right now mm. you just have to get in the, get comfortable with putting stuff out there. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Because then once you get really comfortable with it, then you can, Take the next step, next step. It becomes easier and easier and easier, right? Uh, it's like an ex- it's like exercising, right? Yeah. So you, yeah, you right just... now you're just going for a walk for like five minutes a day, okay. and then once you get comfortable with that, okay, then you jog for like twenty minutes a day, right? And then when you get comfortable with that, you do thirty we'll minutes a day. And so on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll try it. I did have uh, my personal t- uh, Twitter, but it was. Um, it got just create a brand new account yeah no i'm not going so, there <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah just just this way you know that nobody's looking at it <laughs> right i won't tell anyone about it anyways just, yeah and yeah. don't tell anyone about it yeah. just, just just so that you can get in the habit of documenting your process documenting your writing right okay and document my writing because so, and i feel like that that can be a, such a quick easy step Right. For me to just and, post yeah. what I what I have in my mind, yeah. because you're already doing it, I'm just asking you to do it on a different app. <laughs> do you understand what I mean? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, I'll post and goes on Twitter uh, on a brand new like. I should link it to my Instagram, right? I'll just yeah, I'll just yeah. Post for it. now, no, yeah, just for now, keep it separate. You know, like what we had this one member mm. last year. She. Uh, had trouble, uh, you know, going on, like, making videos, right? And what I told her to do was first, and what happened was every time she goes on video, she she becomes, like, talks differently and things like that. Mm. So what I told her to do was I said, okay, every day I'm going to text you a a question. I'm going to DM you a question. And I just want you to reply to me, but you have to reply to me in a video message on the uh-huh. DM. So we did that for a while. And then after a while, I said, now, okay, do the same thing, hmm. but create a brand new TikTok account and do it on there. And don't follow anyone. <laughs> right? so like completely anonymous, like, okay. like not anonymous, cause, but you know, so okay, she started posting there. And then just very quickly, she got really comfortable with it. Hmm. Do you understand what I mean? I so it, I'm asking you to do the same thing, but on the Twitter writing. instead yeah. through writing yeah okay I'll do that um it's not going to be easy for me <laughs> because I don't know like it's the same thing for her for me um uh, because I kept my thoughts to myself all the time all the stories even if I wrote like a short story right I always keep it to myself keep it so, or like share it with a friend sometimes uh it became to the point where I'm so pr- protective over my what my brains hold inside of it that i I, i'm comfortable it's my comfort zone you know like it got to the point like i remember and like one of the first time i thought about writing screenwriting is because Mm. you know i don't even listen to music on long travel or anything because i'll be thinking of of a story or whatever that i'm so involved in it for an hour or so. And I remember I was so involved in my story and I killed a character that I started crying. And I was in the subway, <laughs> people around me. And I had no idea where am I. I was that engrossed in it. And I was like, well, I need to start writing this. You know, it became, it became my Why music do you think will something. happen if you let it out? 
Like what? What? What is the? Let's dig a little bit deeper into that fear. Okay. Like, if you let your thoughts out there, and other people see it and hear it, what? What do you think? What's the worst night? What's your worst nightmare? In doing that. I don't know if I have a nightmare. I just don't. I just like. It's it feels like taking off my scarf. I don't. It's not something I want to do, right? So it's there is no fear behind it. I'm not scared of you seeing my hair or anything. I don't care about that. It's just who I am, right? So I oh actually yeah maybe maybe I'm scared of people finding who I am, but I've never thought of that of yeah that way. <laughs> <laughs> I stole your thing. Yeah. Maybe I've never... I, I, I do think I I do think that's how most people feel. That we we're truly afraid of people finding Who we people are. knowing the the real us. Or something like that. Mm. Even though I feel like I'm a very real person with people. Interesting. I never I never I never So do you do you think uh are you reserved like in in so how are you when you meet new people i'm not oh are you reserved or are you very open i have intuition mm -hmm. so i'll be sitting there looking at you for two four minutes <laughs> be like hi how are you blah 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 right and it'll be like yeah, everything's fine. Blah, Does it blah, take blah. you some time to sometimes get close to somebody? Sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, like I click with people right away. It depends on the person, the situation where I met them. But mm -hmm. I would say, like ninety percent of the time, I I am like approached by someone, and that person resisting on becoming my friend, or um, we have to do work together, or something like that. Okay, like. Uh, all like yeah i'm reserved what what would happen if <laughs> what would happen if like a complete stranger mm. like you know knew the real you like read your tweets or whatever whatever your writing is your thoughts and all of that like what 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 do you think will happen and what what, would, what are you afraid of there uh, yeah. probably we're going to like if they don't like it they're just going to tell me they don't like it, it's rubbish blah 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 Maybe mm -hmm. I will, probably I will be thinking about that all the time, why they don't like it. It's not just why they don't like it. I, you know what? I don't care if they don't like it. I'll probably be fighting. I'll, be, I'll probably be like going back and forth with that person about it. Um, because I like. And do you, I like do you like doing that? Not all the time. I think it's my brain tells me this is a waste of your time. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Mm. I don't want to do that. I want to like, you know, post and ghost. No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't want to fight. I don't want to like. I, I can relate convince. because that happens to me a lot. Yeah, um, especially on Twitter. Mm. What happens is, <laughs> People you know, like, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll tweet something and somebody's like, actually, like, mm. you know, they they they're gonna give they're gonna give me their opinion Pain, and things yeah. like that which is that. fine it's just... but here's the thing right once you once i go down that rabbit especially on twitter mm. it's ne you're never ever ever gonna change their mind no <laughs> that <laughs> people who are on twitter who are yeah. going going to find tweets that they disagree with mm. and go out of their way to comment to tell you that they disagree with you mm. there's no way you're gonna change their mind no. because their goal is to disagree with you. <laughs> this is their, yeah, this is their entertainment. <laughs> yeah, I because I had I had a Twitter my personal the when I, I think it got stolen. I don't know what happened with it, but it mm -hmm. was during the war. I don't know if you know about the war in Sudan, but it was during 2019, and a lot of like bad things were happening. Yeah, and I feel obligated to share and talk and and because like Sudan is one of those countries where like. You have to fight for the world to know about everything the correct way, the way it is, not the, the the stereotypes and stuff like that. And I felt obligated. And the reason why I got myself out of the whole social media is, you know, I was hooked to a machine. My my uh, health was much more important than telling people, you know, even though it's my country and people are dying. And I just, 
you know, it was a priority to take care of myself at that time. And I had to understand that instead of stressing over like videos and, and I felt I'll pray mm-hmm. for them. This is what I, you know, and what happened was that what you were telling me, you can't convince people um, or like they just, they're just here, there to disagree with you. If someone is spreading rumors, they're going to spread it, you know, so you let it go. One of the lessons. I yeah, I think that that. For me, actually, what happened was being on social media. So <laughs> I was exactly like that. I would post something and somebody, some, some, you know, 18 year old designer will be like, actually, my man, you don't know what you're talking about, whatever it is, right? Mm. And I would sit there going back and forth and back and forth, right? Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just like <laughs> trying to think about what I'm going to call it back and yeah. things like that. But actually, over time, one of the things that maybe because I was, uh, aware of that i was aware that i'm letting these things trigger me mm. and i'm letting it like bother me and things mm. like that yes. but over time what happened was it it almost became like an exercise for me to not get bothered by it do you understand what i mean yes to a point where now i see i'll see a comment i get triggered for like a second and then i'm like okay next <laughs> do you know what i mean where is it like <laughs> Two years ago, if you saw me, I'd be like, Ooh, <sighs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it it almost became like a tool for exercising my, maybe my mindfulness or me, try, me trying to be more present, maybe. Okay. Or something like that. Okay. Um, more present with something yourself? Something like that, yeah. Like, yeah, because like, like it's, it's hard to be present when you <laughs> when you're in that mental state, right? Like yeah, when no, you, when somebody so disagrees with you. It's annoying. But then you, it happens so much times. Mm. Like let's, but let's say let's say it happened to you five thousand times. Five thousand times later, it's not going to be as you're not going to be as bothered by it as it was the first time. Yes. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I've been so I, I I got used to it. <laughs> Me, I just ran away. I was like. Oh, no, I just uh, my mind piece, but I totally can relate. Um, I think the things that uh, you know trigger me is or are like you know some like I don't like stereotypes. I don't like um, there's there are a lot of things that just annoy me, like Cinderella <laughs> not leaving the house. Why didn't she? You know, I I keep thinking about it. Such a, such a stupid story to it, right? Maybe because I wouldn't have. Uh, but it's always important to have um, many points of view, in my opinion. Even the person who is disagreeing with you to spread rumors, eventually I, I would, like, what I find myself doing is sitting down asking, why did they do that? What's the point? Blah, blah, blah. blah the thing blah. is, what what happens is, if you're not, you're basically self-censoring yourself mm. right now oh. by not putting your thoughts out there, right? because you're you're not sharing your thoughts even though you want to share your thoughts right you want to get it out there you're not doing it because you're afraid of other people so you're actually letting them control you right now by not (laughs) sharing right Mm. so and i was actually doing the same before but i think what happens is I mean, maybe this this is this also helped me. Like, when when I had a cert, I built some sort of a community on Instagram where I knew someone about the followers who who, who and I'm engaging with them yeah. and I'm talking to them and stuff like that. What ended up happening is when somebody would comment or something like that, they would come to my defense, oh. <laughs> and they're like, because sometimes like tell they so, to so, say something without understanding the whole context, mm. and then I I just I don't want to go through the motion of explaining to that person and going back and forth and having this whole debate, mm. like because I've I've also had that debate before. a thousand times mm. <laughs> before on previous posts, right? I don't feel like doing it again and again and again and again. Mm. But then, because my audience understood the context of like when I say, you know, when I say like, don't follow your, don't do what you love or something like that, like mm. my audience understand what I really mean, right? I'm mm. not saying don't. <laughs> Don't actually do what you love, right? And so they they they'll actually come to my defense, and I I I, I could beautiful. I could stop. But the, the 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 thing is, when those people are finding people to comment on because they don't have their own audience, 
they also want to let their <laughs> words out, <laughs> but nobody will listen to them because they haven't built a following. Okay. So they're going on other people's feed <laughs> and、yeah. basically hijacking their audience. <laughs> do you understand what I mean? I do. I never thought about. You see, I never thought about that. <laughs> this way, <laughs> this is so enlightening. I, I've never. Yeah, I was just. Like imagine me living here. Every time someone、mm-hmm. asks me why do you wear a scarf, for them this is the first time they ask the question. In 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 to- you say you're in Toronto. Yeah. Well, it doesn't happen a lot in Toronto. <laughs> But I went. Toronto to- is the most diverse city in the yes, world. Yes. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen a lot in Toronto. <laughs> Even I went- more than New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the thing. I landed in Toronto like 11 years ago, and then I went to study in Ottawa. Now Ottawa is a okay, okay. different. It's different.、Yeah. <laughs> People would right away comment on my accent. I'm like,、oh, this is rude.、Uh-huh. But yeah, you under you like you know. But just like it's just a metaphor, right? Ima- for that person, maybe they saw something about me. They thought, oh, this person is approachable. I can ask them. Mm-hmm. For them, this is the first time they ask the question and and expressing、mm-hmm. their interest.、Mm-hmm. For me, this is not the first time, right?、Yeah. For me, I've answered this question.、Um, someone who asked with good intention and someone who wanted to like you know with not so much good intention or someone who was like a, someone someone asked. But you can tell, right? Of Just, course, I can tell. But、yeah. it depends on the day, and also it's exhausting too because. Well, this is a different topic than opinion. It's exhausting too because, for in Islam, it's just one Muslim person who's going to be representing the whole nation for that one person.、Mm-hmm. They just put that burden on you, and they、mm-hmm. and like when people with good intention, they just approach you as if you are like Mother Teresa or something, you know, the, an angel,、mm-hmm. blah blah blah. <laughs> you you're just a human being. <laughs> who made a choice, right? So it just so it's like putting pressure on you. It's、basically. too much pressure and blah blah blah. And but you you just you just like sh- like what you say made me realize it's a moment of epiphany, you know, that this is them expressing their interest and opinion. And yeah, I don't know if you were there when I talked about this topic, but the the reason why I bring this up is because you also mentioned before when. When people are like, oh, when you talk about your your、uh, autoimmune disease, yeah, people are like, oh, are you okay? Like I'm a, like basically treating you like a, a frail patient, thing, right? Cause, yeah. Because <laughs> like I actually heard that what what uh people with like um chronic disease or something like that, that like when people are patient, what they actually hate more than、uh, fear more than um the The actual pain or anything like that is being categorized as a patient, like that I'm not healthy. I'm not. I'm not a, you know, a healthy person. Like、uh, people、mm-hmm. are gonna see me as a pa- that identity of being a patient、mm, is annoying. Is what they actually hate more <laughs> than than the actual, <laughs> and that's think, that's crazy, right? I think it's not because I've been through this, and I、mm-hmm. I don't think I've I recently start talking about it, but while I was there.、Mm-hmm. I was not talking. I only talked to the people that I trust the most, and that's actually how、mm-hmm. I got the the kidney because I told someone who was my friend, who were like,、mm-hmm. no one in my family was adaptable. Like no one in my family was like, I could they could have given me a kidney. So I've been I could have been waiting till now if I didn't talk to a friend, right? And I I actually don't agree with that because I've sat、agree、in support. I don't agree that they don't be want to be like put in that category as a patient. Because I've seen people going out there and talking about their chronic illness, because it's important for others, you know. But I, I think it's um. Oh, you. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that. Like, obviously, not everybody. Yeah. Will no, be like no. that. No. But for example, um, it, the emotional pain is greater than physical pain, is what I'm trying to say, and like the the thing about identity is.、Hmm. So I don't know if you were there when, like a few weeks ago, I talked about how I hate it when you know, like I somebody will ask me, "Hey, oh, where are you from?" I I, I think you were there, right? And then I'm like, "Oh, I'm from,、uh, <coughs> uh, I'm 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 from here. I live 
I live in New York or whatever it is, right? Okay. They're like, no, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I grew oh, up in California. Oh, okay. And then they're like, no, where are you from, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm Korean, okay? okay. <laughs> like, and then as soon as I'm, I, I say I'm Korean, they're like, oh, I love kimchi. Okay. Or like, I, I'm not going to tell you You know, that. like <laughs> that whole thing. Yeah. And for me, that bothered me for so long, right? Mm. Um, because it, it, it's literally like, the hundredth times I've heard people say it, right? Yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's not like, but to that person, it's the, first it's the literally the first time. Mm. And it's, it's actually like them trying to connect with you to show you like mm. that they know Korean culture, right? Yes. So it's not coming from a, um, no, like a malintention. They're actually coming from a place of like wanting to connect or something like that. And a lot of times, like, so I had to learn, and I, I actually noticed that I also do that sometimes. Like when I when I meet somebody and I know a lot about their culture or something like that, mm. you know, I'll, I'll try to bring something up so that they know that I know. You know, you're what not I mean? like, ignorant. You know about exactly, yes, yeah, yes. exactly. Yes, but I, 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 and then I can say, oh, is that what I'm doing? Like, mm. I, am I owning the shit out of that person because like <laughs> they've heard it like a million times? Like, yes. Yeah. So it, it's kind of, um, you know, that that. That can also be, I think, a, a an exercise for us mm. to be like to to not let that bother bother you, right, or something like that, maybe. So, I mean, um, I I just think that social media has completely opened my eyes because uh, it's opened my eyes to be be more okay with not being understood, or maybe being more okay with, you know, n not everybody needs to get me or something like that <laughs> Do you understand yeah, what I mean? you're comfortable being the odd one maybe or like um, or, or like you 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 do you and i'll do me yes kind of deal uh, yeah like we don't have to agree we don't have to you know <laughs> you don't have to understand where i'm coming from it's mm. fine mm. you know what i mean like it's fine we can learn like yeah. something new about each other and just continue yeah yeah i i love this this is i've I've learned this because I've changed schools and um, the first time I changed the school, it was, I was living in Sudan and went to a d same language, different accents and dialect. And I kid you not, I couldn't understand my teachers. And when I talk, the people in the class couldn't understand me because I was like speaking like raw Sudanese accents. And they mm -hmm. were too. So for sometimes they laugh at me, right? Just like someone laughing at it as someone who has a thick accent in English. So I have learned that I'm okay. it's fine. I can be the odd person, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. because I've learned that, I got more into myself. And this got me. What into age did you move there? I was... Um, Probably 12 or 11, something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But before that, because I was living in Yemen, so I moved from Yemen like five, six years to Sudan, in which I, I couldn't also was understand. Was that like a big change? Yes, because in, in Yemen, I was, it was like I was, I didn't even go to. I didn't go to kindergarten. I went straight to grade one because of my, like my dad is a vet. So we used to live in a chicken farm, mm -hmm. not an actual chicken farm, just a real one. So he was the doctor. Mm -hmm. blah, blah. So uh, I think the kindergarten was so far. So it was me and my brother playing together and some few kids, you know. Um, and then I went to school uh, in my country and I'm supposed to be from that country. Everyone else looked like me. But I would come home asking about words and, and like to the point where um, I think <laughs> my mom is still tell this story. I probably can't uh, tell it in English because it makes mm. sense in Arabic. It doesn't make sense in English. <laughs> but <laughs> they were asking for the student, uh, student fee or something like that. And I came home and the word for it means drawings. So I was, I came home, I started drawing and my mom was like, do you have a, like an assignment? Mom? I was like, well, this, this, the principal wanted this. And my mom was laughing. She was like, she wanted money. She didn't want you to draw. <laughs> and, and I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> Anyways, so it, and I've been through this. Like when I moved here to Canada, I was like, um, when I was in university, when there's a word I don't understand, mm -hmm. I, I'll be like, what does that mean? I don't, I don't mm -hmm. wait to go home. Because I don't care at this point in my life. I grew. If someone laughed at my accent, they can laugh. Because you know what? I've been 
anyway, everywhere and seen a lot and probably know more than you. You only speak one language. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know what I mean? So I'm okay with being the odd, but it's just sharing that I'm the odd is not easy for me. Um, or like, I don't, maybe I'm not an odd person. It's just like sharing with, with, um, but why, what, why is sharing? Cause it seems like you're, you're completely fine in person. Yeah. When, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You and it's I are now social. talking, right? You and yeah. I are now talking. And because in the back of my head, I'm not thinking mm -hmm. about you posting it on YouTube. If this was a live, mm -hmm. I'm probably quiet. And I don't know why. Uh, I even like what, what if you were like in, in on on stage? Oh, I'm fine like, with the stage. I, I did emceeing. I even, yeah. you know what? When I was in Sudan, they were just talking about it yesterday. Thank God it's not on YouTube. You know those <laughs> um, kids songs when the kids like there's mm. little kids who dance and do this. Yeah, mm. I was in those. <laughs> and I okay, so, so uh, th th there's something because you said thank God it's not on YouTube. <laughs> so what's the difference between? So, I think I'm just so. What's the difference between people on YouTube, yeah, and people in re in real life in I, that room? I, I have no idea. I I can't figure it out. I because think I think you know deep inside. <laughs> well, uh, maybe I'm self conscious. I don't want to look at myself. Well, you know, you know uh, people are a lot more meaner online than in like. Oh really? Nobody oh. will. The, 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 in the, your face. the type of stuff that people comment on my <laughs> Twitter and things like that, those people probably will never say that to my face. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> probably is, it will maybe because it will be have more audience. It's unfiltered. It's unfiltered and they ha it has more audience, more people are gonna see it. Um like, oh, it's like you have no control over who's gonna see it. Oh, yeah. you know what? That's that's the reason, control. I'm controlling. Everyone tells me that. You know what, what I realized? <laughs> yeah. I just talked about this, but you know when I was young and I I was really uh, bad at like talking to girls? Mm. Like we would go to a bar or a club or whatever and people were like, oh, son, go talk to her or whatever, right? Mm. And I would never do it because... And, it was, it, and I always thought that it was because I was afraid of rejection, right? Yeah. But it wasn't because I was a... I wasn't afraid. Of, like when I thought about it more, it wasn't because I was afraid of rejection from her. Mm. Because if I, by not talking to him, I'm already rejected. Yes. <laughs> right? So by who default. cares, right? Yeah. Yeah. But what I was more afraid of was I was afraid of rejection from my friends. Like uh, me going you. to talk to her, getting rejected, oh. and them oh. watching me and making fun of me, and then going to tell all my other friends about it. And then like, oh, son, such a loser. I got rejected by her. That, that's what I was more afraid of, right? Mm. And I noticed that a lot of people that post on social media have that similar thing mm. where they're less afraid of the public seeing it, but they're more afraid of people who they know or people from school or people from their childhood or somebody that's seeing it. Probably. <laughs> mm. And, and, and kind of like... Yes, because I can't... Like I can't control who sees it. I can't control who shares it. No, I think it's about you, what you said and control too, because I had a, a legit phobia from driving and I, ha I have my license now. Uh, <laughs> but what I like after spending so much money, I've decided, okay, I'm going to go to therapy because I'm losing money and I'm losing, and maybe this is an actual thing. And Sabrina, you're in mental health. Just yeah, you know, shame on like you. Like a phobia <laughs> from driving? Yeah, that's what I, <laughs> I did. Like, you know, I did the test and like, I was like, I think I had a panic attack there, but I finished it. I finished it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the instructor was so mean, man. Anyways, so I had a session and, uh, so many sessions, exposure and blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, we, like we went deeper, we dig deeper and deeper and deeper into this. And the therapist said, said she, you cannot control the road. You cannot control mm -hmm. what other drivers do. Just do your part and, you know, mm -hmm. be present. And it turns out because she's like, what she says is, um, the exposure is like you she would ask me are you comfortable inside the car and then you're driving it and then like you're in a road alone are you okay i'll be fine the moment like 
she like be like there's two cars there's four mm-hmm. cars there's five cars this mm-hmm. is when i'm like okay because i don't trust what the other drivers are doing i can't control them mm-hmm. i can't control what happens in the road but i and right now um i would like i drove 40 50 minutes away blah 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 and i was fine i mean it was scary but i i made it back and forth everything was fine but the moment i had my family in the car with me is this is where i'm like i start panicking because i can't i was like my brother was like can you do this can you just like don't talk to me you need to mm-hmm. sit there quietly i will get oh, drive you. i yeah. felt like he, he will distract me you know mm-hmm. but he wasn't dra- distracting me he was just talking t- to my sister right it, but does that show up anywhere else in your life uh, all my outside life. of driving driving um i'm more comfortable in jobs that I do myself, even like, Mm -hmm. um, I can do teamwork, but I'll be the leader. And I don't even force it. I just sit there and be the leader. Like, I don't force it even. (laughs) Well, I mean, (laughs) that's just gonna happen. And you know, when you're in school and you do a group project, Mm. whoever, whoever does the, whoever steps up and does the thing Mm. (laughs) is gonna control it, right? Because, and most, the rest, most of the people are just gonna sit there and kind of be like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> yes what do you want me to do <laughs> or something like that basically so i trust my like i tr- i do the job i'm fine with doing the whole job because i just can't demand i think it just it's over dependence or some sort of stuff like that i need to dig deeper on it uh but yeah i feel like it's, maybe it's little... probably things that you care about though mm. because for example right like I- i'm a little bit of control freak too <laughs> so at work, I I I try I, I you know, and, and I've gotten better at it now. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, when it comes to planning vacations, I'm not control freak at all. I want somebody else to plan it, and I want somebody else to figure out where we're gonna go and yes. <laughs> the itinerary and all, yes, all of yes. it. And then and then there are people who who really really is a control freak about that, right? Mm-hmm. Because to that person, the vacation is really important, yes, or something mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So like, it probably depends on what you're, what you find is important for you. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yes. I agree. Cause I don't like, I, I can cook well, but I prefer to have a meal in front of me. So I don't, I don't, I don't mind. So cooking is not something that you feel the need to control or something like that. Not yeah. at all. Uh, okay. there's, there's a lot of things that I don't care about, but if you put me in charge, I'll just do them because I'm used to doing them. If someone say mm-hmm. oh, you need to cook, I'll just go there and cook because I can cook, and I'm used mm-hmm. to like you know. But I won't be as my heart is not there. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's important. It's really important that first of all, it's really good that you're you're very aware of yourself, and it's also important that to understand like in in what situations that that personality helps and where where mm-hmm. it kind of it's, it hurts, and you know, being aware of that because sometimes that's not. Like for example, if you um, if you own your own company mm. and you hire people, mm. that's not necessarily uh, that's a great it. thing oh. because what en- what ends up happening is it's it's good in a situation like what you know where you're leading a project or something like that. But in a company, what happens is you also need to create other leaders. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you're gonna be the type of person that doesn't let other people lead. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of it and and what's gonna happen is they're gonna have to come to you mm. like every decision they make right yeah they're gonna have to come to you and run it by you and what do you think blah, blah, blah. and then eventually what ends up happening that 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 person doesn't do make yeah. any decisions yeah. because, it's my because decision. <laughs> oh, yeah. because they, they don't they can't decide for themselves right so i think this is holding yeah but anyway back. it's not holding you back like i it's it sounds like you would be the you would be best in working for yourself, like either freelancing or like writing rather than like starting a company and, yeah. <laughs> you know, like building a team. And like, oh, yeah. Because I, I couldn't build a team, like I I couldn't build a team past certain size because of that. Okay. Because I, it was hard for me to <laughs> let go. I mean, I eventually I figured out how to do it. Okay. But it bothered me every time I see something go out and it wasn't perfect or something like that. <laughs> like it would eat me up inside, right? Mm-hmm. But then you have to let them fail. You have to let them do that. 
and then you have to let them learn from their own mistakes. <laughs> and then yeah, you, you have to you get yelled at by the clients. Yeah. And you, you have to be okay with that before you and then eventually they'll get better, right? Or something like that. But it, it's still not going to be perfect. But for you, you know, like the 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 big obstacle I see for you is um first of all, you have to take baby steps in terms of putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Because you know, people talk about it like just who cares what other people just just post, right? Just <laughs> just create content, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's easier said than done, right? Like, <laughs> yes. isn't that how most people are? Like, it's easier, it's, it's easier said than done. It's like when, when people say, you know, mm. like, just, just manifest a million dollars. Like, most people can't do that because, mm. yeah, I can, I can say, oh, I manifest a million dollars, but deep down in their heart, they don't believe it really. <laughs> do you understand <laughs> what I mean? Like, yes. or like, mm. Oh, don't worry about your bills, right? It's it's hard for most people to just ignore their bills and not worry about it, right? So this is a similar thing. It's a, it's it's going to be hard for you to just go and start posting. So I think you have to take baby steps, like you know, start posting on Twitter a little bit, right? Mm. And then maybe start putting out podcast episodes, maybe audio only first, and then go into the video. And then once you get more more comfortable with that, then take it and put it on 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 Instagram. Mm. Instagram is the, by the way, from my experience, Instagram is actually the most Hard. safest oh, safe. platform mm-hmm. for, like, <laughs> I noticed that, like, uh, people on Twitter are brutal, right? People on <laughs> YouTube are brutal. Okay. Like, people on TikTok, half an, they can be really brutal. Like, but the thing is, the, the, the biggest um, obstacle that I see for you is because, it it is a brutal world out there when it you is. start putting out content on these platforms, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it, it's I'm afraid that you're you're gonna let those things stop you from posting. Okay, do you understand what I mean? So yes. you really need to l- learn how to block those things out. Mm-hmm. And and when you when you see those things, when you see those comments that you that are trying to like troll you or trigger you or something like that and trust me that is the point (laughs) that that is their goal right um so you know taking baby steps maybe yeah take a step back but then like make sure you have to you have to keep at it Hmm. and the best way to do it is to just to 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 ignore it completely i was i was thinking (laughs) (laughs) i was thinking to start a podcast with video and all, but because no one is gonna see me on YouTube anyways, because uh, mm-hmm. this is a, it will be like yeah, YouTube uh, is gonna be the uh, most like, le- least views, least right? views, Compared right? Other, so yeah. I can just not announce it on Instagram and take the audio, my audio at least, yeah. and just make it a voiceover for Instagram. At least for me to have yeah. content that's not related to writing, because I actually I, think even on Instagram it's gonna be pretty safe. Even with my face on it, people people on Instagram are not. They're not mean. <gasps> compared so, to other social. <laughs> I don't know why Instagram has the nicest comments. <laughs> the Leo, shine girl, yeah, yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Um, um, okay, I'll see. I'll see. Like, I rarely get mean comments on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. I don't think. Um, I think after talking to you, it's not the the uh because i have some kind of immunity against strange strangers or like someone who i don't know i think for me it's the people i know it's you not know, you know what I, one of my friends did mm. so did this guy grew yeah instagram and i think he was also on tiktok to like 50k followers or something like that mm-hmm. but until recently and he started around the same time I did, like three years ago. Mm. And he said that when he first got on Instagram, he blocked everyone. He blocked all of his friends, his mom, his family, his whole family. He blocked everyone. And then um, it was just very recently in the last few months, he unblocked them. Okay. And the reason why he unblocked them is because like the one of the friends that he knew from high school that he thought was going to like be like, who do you um, think you are, Gary Vee or something? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> actually, that was kind of my fear too. Right, I, I, I had a fear of 
I, I used to do Instagram stories like every day a lot, mm. but then I can never do it in public. I can never go out in public and make an Instagram story video or something like that because I was afraid of people like in the street, like judging me and looking at me like, who do you think you are, Gary Vee or <laughs> you know, like something mm. like that. Mm. So like, who do you think you're an influencer or something, right? Like, yeah. and that's kind of like what he was afraid of, right? Mm. But then one of his friends actually like, message me is like is this you like is is this is, is this the mm-hmm. you know is this so and so from this school mm-hmm. and then it was like oh and then they were they were actually very supportive about it right so at the end of the day like even even those things that we think people are gonna like judge us for or something like that mm-hmm. it's just not true but you know one way to handle that is just block all of them <laughs> Before you told me the story, I thought this is what my your friend did because this is what I was thinking about to overcome it. Uh, because when I started yeah, my that's Instagram, what he did. when I started my Instagram, I no one that I know except the people who support me, like three friends mm. or something like that, and probably my family. But even with that, um, you know, even with that, it was hard to post some poems because. When you write as a writer, everyone thinks this is about you. It is not, mm-hmm. right? It's not about you. It's an inspiration. It's like, you know, you don't have to go into the relationship to write. Mm-hmm. As a writer, I can tell you that. I could watch a mm-hmm. show, I'll come up with a crazy idea or like I'll come up with a break of a story or a poem or like heartbreak or something like that. I even like one of my closest friends, I posted something and she messaged me, oh no, you should have done this, you should have done this and that. I was like, girl, this is not about me. This is just, I see what you, mean. Yeah. you know what I mean? And then, and then I was but like, let me tell you, th- let me ask you this. Mm. Who cares? Oh Let's say did, she did think that it was about you. Let's say it wasn't about you, but mm. somebody mistaken. Cause that happens to me so many times mm. where I, I'll create a content mm. about, about something else or I'll create a content. I, this is what I meant, but people totally mistaken it, or people mm. are totally like, you know, puts different meaning in it or something like that, that I, that wasn't even my intention. Mm. And, you know, like, do you know Jay Shetty? Of course. Do you know course. who Jay Shetty is? Of course. Yeah. Okay. One he's, so he's one of my people. clients. And yeah. <laughs> one thing he said was, like, I remember listening to him in the podcast and somebody says, like, what do you think that you, um, what is it something that, that you, don't care about as much as other people or something like that right like what 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 do you care less about than m- most people and he said something so profound he said um i he said needing to be understood hmm. so that's like another thing that i'm really trying to practice because <laughs> i'm really actually that's that's one of my weak biggest weaknesses that i always feel the need to be understood you and I think it's it. because you say, do you understand yeah. me? Yeah. I've noticed. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, mm-hmm. I, and I'm, that's why I'm on there. I'm like, trying to explain to these people. No, that's, I'm trying to make them understand. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and it probably has something to do with like my, like I, I used to always get in trouble and my dad used to always beat me. And like, I, he wouldn't let me explain. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, if, let me explain. <laughs> right. And I, I think that, mm-hmm. that trauma is still like there carried on. Uh, even even now mm. and i constantly feel the need to be understood and I, I that's one thing that i've been really working on actually recently in the past year or so like letting do, go do, of that need to be understood do you want everyone to understand you or just the people you care about the, no yeah anyone who doesn't understand me you like, want anyone so for, <laughs> okay. so for example here's here's one right okay um the other like a long time ago i posted this post about um how to plan a website and that you know everybody cares about usability usability user experience blah blah, blah. yeah and I, I was talking about it's it's not just about uh, making it easy for the user to use you also have to you know make it you know the business friendly so you can sell your product right and i was like and then all this newbie 21 year old designers came and like trashed me like you like this guy has no idea what he's talking about blah, 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 right no more, yeah or it's something like I work on a pro- like okay like so I've been running my agency for two, 12 years now and we've tried every uh, technology platform and mm-hmm. at the end we we ended up 
landed on WordPress because WordPress is actually one of the technology technology wise is one of the worst platforms. Oh, there, the technology is not great, mm. but it's just the most popular one, right? It's the one that everyone uses. Mm. But there are other platforms that are technologically more advanced. And I would hire interns or new developers and they'll be like, Son, why don't you use Ruby on Rails? Why don't you use Java? Why don't you like all these other platforms? Like they're so much better, right? Mm. Not exactly. knowing that we've tried all of that. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why we use this shitty <laughs> platform is because it's the one that all of our clients prefer. Mm. If, if when we deliver the project to the client and let's say they need to hire a developer, it's it, they can easily find the developer because it's the most popular platform. Okay. If that developer gets stuck with something and they go- want to Google an answer, they can easily find the answer because it's open source and hmm. it's, um, it's most people use it. So most problem has already been solved and you can find it on some forum. Hmm. So there's all these other reasons, right? Hmm. I so I hate it when somebody <laughs> comes and try to teach me something as I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> like I already know what you know. Plus ten steps. I'm ten steps ahead of you. So, and, and I and and I have the need to explain to that person. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Like those kinds of things. I, I I'm, I'm learning to let go. To let go. Like, uh, it's it's for but me. It's so hard for me. <laughs> I understand how hard it is for me. It's uh, it's the people I care about. It's not everyone mm-hmm. else. It's, it's just that's why when I started. Um, I didn't tell a lot of people or like I told the people I care oh, so about and that, was, thing. and that yeah. was the mistake <laughs> that I told the people I care about. I should have just started just by myself, right? Yeah. Uh, if you I should did, block them. I should block them. <laughs> I should definitely block them, but they already know too much. <laughs> they're like, why did you pluck us? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> they, oh, gosh, they're so all the time. Um, Do you think that there are people that you you care about who has different opinions than you? Of course. Is that why? Probably, yes. And, you, and, and you I think don't... That's the, I, I yeah. d- maybe I think I would lose them for different opinions and I don't want to. Mm-mm-mm. You know, I'm like getting to know about myself. Is this a therapy session? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe. I get, I disagree with a lot with my mom. Mm. Like me and mom, my mom Same. disagree a lot. But she's not on my and, Instagram. <laughs> She's always telling me, like, son, you can't say that. You can't say mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> things like this. But you know, like, uh, I don't know. We've, I, I guess, I've learned to draw boundaries with my mom. Mm-hmm. So, like, and I, I, I've, I guess it, it's, it's a, it, and and you know, my mom is very controlling, so mm-hmm. she would never have that. But now we've got because I've drawn that boundary, we've gotten to a point where we can be close and we can talk about anything. Mm-hmm. Without her having to like try to oh. control me with my opinions. <laughs> How did he do that? I don't. I don't get controlled by anyone. I do what I want. It, it just what happens is, um, this is this is what uh, I just do what I want. You know what I mean? And this, and then what happens? Like when you when you just do what you want. People get people who I love get upset or like they don't talk to me or like. You know, but I still do what I want, you know, and I don't want there's people that I don't want to like be upset or But like, do you think do you feel like as time goes by they become less and less upset? <laughs> yeah, they let go. <laughs> Cuz I already did what I like you know um was something I did. I'm trying to to, to like honestly all my life with my like you know father's and daughters, uh, I, what I found is in my life, what I've, and my friends were telling me, like in the relationship with their fathers, the respect and everything else. Me, I'm just, I'll sit down and say what I want, you know, and like it, if he doesn't want me to do something, why? Convince me. Otherwise, I'll go do it and make the mistake and learn. And mm-hmm. it was like, just it's, it was a, a journey, just like what you say, of uh, me him realizing the daughter he has is not rebellious. It's just she won't understand unless she do it, and and, it, and for him to trust me to do it, right? So that is rebellious. 
That's rebellious. And I, think, I don't think it's a bad thing. I it's don't not a bad being, thing. No, it's not a bad thing. It's I just, think re- being rebellious just means that you you have you're sticking to your opinions, right? Rather than just being told what to do and just yeah. going along with it. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yes. So I actually think that you know I don't know if you heard this, but you know, good leaders are good at you know keeping order, right? Following mm-hmm. rules, keeping rules, and things like that. Mm-hmm. But great leaders know when to break them. But great leaders what? Know how to break them? Great leaders know when to break those break the rules. Yeah. Right? And so to be a great leader, you kind of have... Like, I think to be a good manager, mm. you have to be good at following orders and following rules. Mm. But to be a great... Like, to, to be more. a real great leader, yeah. you yeah. actually have to know when to break the rules. When and where. Uh, that's what yeah. I tell my sister. She said, uh, like, two days ago, we had, a, we had a, like, a discussion. And she said, but you did that, you know? Yeah. And I said, different time, different situation. I know fathers <laughs> also say that. I sounded like my dad. But um, I just know when and where to do it. And, like, with my dad, I don't know. I even do this with my clients is to choose the battle that you're going to break mm-hmm. the rule for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. you can't. You have to balance it. Yeah. You have to balance it. You follow some rules, yeah. and others, yeah. and others are the ones that are important to you. Maybe someone yeah. else breaking the rule for them is yeah. to take off their scarf. Right, that's not yeah. my battle. Yeah. That's not yeah. the battle I want to go through yeah. because uh, I, really because cool. eventually it was my this was my decision. No one forced it, so it, it's not a battle for me. Right, but a battle is something else. Like for example. When I left med school, because my father was paying for it, <laughs> you know, it was and I because I studied in um, in my high school diploma was from UAE. So back when I was studying back home, they treated me as an international student. So he was paying in US dollars, huge amounts of money, and and I was smart. I got this by my grades and everything, but I had to pay. You know, he had to pay, and I didn't ask to know. Like I didn't ask. I knew I could make it myself, and I was doing that right. So when I left. And when I said I'm leaving, it was after years of struggling to find common grounds with him uh, on the fact that I know what I'm doing, even though I'm young, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I remember what he said. He said, okay, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm going to stay here in Canada. It was like we were here mm-hmm. in one week only to get our PR because he's the person who mm-hmm. sponsored us. Uh, PR is permanent resident for anyone who's not in Canada. So, um uh, after one week, and I was like, I was like, this is not enough for me to know what I want. I'm going to stay here to start from scratch. I know I'm 21 years old, and I know I'll be late to whatever you think I'll be late to, but this is what I want to do with my life. And if I made it, then I succeeded, and it's for myself. If I didn't, then I failed, and it's I failed myself, not you, not anyone else. So I'm just going to do it and stay in this country and learn instead of coming back and forth this is not what I want to do with my life. And he was like, okay, your decision, <laughs> you deal with the results. Yeah, so so he did. So what you were saying is over time, he did become okay with it more and more. Of and course, more and more. yes. Yeah. Eventually I became and I think that's, yeah. yeah. And I think that's what's just going to happen in, in Instagram. In oh, you voicing your opinion. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe some you will piss, piss some people off in the beginning. Hmm. But over time, like, and that's kind of how change happens, right? Change doesn't happen like, you know, when, when you, if you, <laughs> you know, if I'm trying to convince my team, right? If I'm trying to convince Night Owls to show up for small group meetings, when I'm trying to like start a movement, right? Like I, I want everybody to know, like, cause one of the things that I hate about our industry hmm. is like, that like 80, 90% of the courses that I see, like high ticket courses are just garbage. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, they're just like people trying to monetize and it doesn't really help people. And and just like, that's one thing I don't like about the self-help world is like the, the whole like manipulation mm-hmm. of like selling self-help of products. Yeah, um, uh, I was a marketer. I know about manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. change doesn't happen easy, right? So, People are going to judge me. People are going to be like, well, actually, son, you know, like people do pay more attention when they pay more, all of those things. And I, but yeah, I, I don't, you know, what, what I realize is that at the end, truth prevails. So 
sometimes when I speak the truth or sometimes when I'm being a, a contrarian, that's mm. like going against popular belief or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I'll, people will give, give me backlash for a long time. Mm. But then, like I learned that, you know, you give it enough time, a year, two years, three years, eventually, like, <laughs> you know, people will turn around Come if around, you are yeah. being truthful, if you are, you know, if your intention is good and all of that. Mm. Like at the end, people do come around. And so we just need to be patient in that time. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that I is going to happen when you start putting your content out there. Yeah, I'm not going to say, just put it out there. Nobody, nobody's like, it's, it's not true. It's <laughs> like not true, yeah. some people are going to give you backlash. Some, some people are not going to like it. But eventually, it'll come around. And when, you're, when you've built an audience, mm. when you have a, when you build a community of people who are with you, mm. those people will, back, like now, that I've grown my Instagram, like people won't come in like, like some people might come in like try to do that. But mm. then, you know, I, I have, I have my community that supports me and I know I will support I really you don't care. I, saw anything. What, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care what that one person says, right? Like, yeah. or something like that. Mm. And, and, and I actually, I think that's the, when you have, when you have put yourself out there and you connected with like-minded people who agree with you, yes. now you have support. Mm. now you have more because of your words and things like that mm. now you have support you have more you know power in what you say so that it can it can reach more even more people you made me realize you know I mean? something i do know what you mean i love re responding to you i do know what you mean <laughs> i feel like it's, <laughs> it's important to tell you that um you made me realize that when you were saying uh, when i just told you my father's story and what you just say yeah. about people coming around and having a community and all of that um, is that I'm just I'm just scared of um, repeating the pattern because I've done it before and I've done it and I've done it and the truth is and what what you've see, what you have said in one of the Sunday services is that no one knows how repetitive your work is or like um, mm -hmm. what is behind the scenes because you keep doing and doing the same things again and again and again and again until you reach a result, right? And even when you have that result, you're just gonna keep going to do the same thing, yeah. right? In the pattern, right? And I realized maybe this what my subconscious was, you know. Um, being protective <laughs> of me repeating a pattern that I've done over and over and going back to the fact that I was, what happened to me uh, during being sick is I actually like cut off, not cut off. I just stopped talking to people is because I got tired. I got exhausted. And in my mind, I was like, Oh, to the point where your, your body got sick. Where are you going with this? You need like, mm -hmm. you need to, <laughs> didn't want to curse you need a break you know yeah. and i think that's what was happening in my brain stopping me from posting and everything else is because what you just what maybe you, you said, need to instead of break maybe you need to detach a little bit <sighs> meaning to detach i think like, i detached um, enough <laughs> i think i need to go back because <laughs> i because i have been not doing a lot of things for yeah. like 20 like when i say detach i mean like not not like maybe you putting out your your words out there mm. but not so much caring about what other people say yeah <laughs> do you understand what i mean yes, that people are and, and about. obviously that's easier said than done it's right? very yeah but, mm. but, I, I think i need to I, prepare I, to the fact yeah. that this might happen yeah. But it's it gonna happen. Stop. It's going. It, that might not. happen. It's it will happen. <laughs> stop reading. It will happen. Yeah, yeah. It will happen. Just yeah, and it will never end. That's the thing. Doesn't end. One of the things that I really had to realize is that as long as you're living and breathing, like misery never ends. Oh, it <laughs> the work life. never <laughs> ends, right? Nothing ends. Like, you and know. I, hmm. I really realized that when. When once like Instagram got a little bit easy for me because like now yeah, people are not me. bashing me as much. Like people don't like you know like kind of like try to put me down because in the beginning when I had no followers, people were like who is this guy? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. 
but then now that when I start, I, I started Twitter very recently, just like a few months, couple months ago, mm. and and I basically had to start all over again from the bottom, right? <laughs> and then people started attacking me, like, and then I realized, okay, this is never going to end because mm. there's always going to be new platform. There's always going to be new people. Like, <laughs> it's, it doesn't. So it, yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. It's better to just prepare for it up mm. front. Yeah. Yeah. And the, w- well, one of the things I, I don't know, it's a system or something, but I've been thinking to myself to have content ahead for probably mm-hmm. a month, like of podcasting. So when I'm out there, <laughs> Um, I don't have a, a, a like a day when I don't post because I wasn't I was down. I have something prepared ahead because I know mm-hmm. this is going to happen ahead of time. Mm-hmm. That was I was thinking. I don't know if like that's too ambitious. Yeah, that, I think that's a good idea. It's it, it actually I, I think for me mm. that's actually a great way to detach because when you create all your content up front and mm. you you've you've already scheduled it out and things like that. Yeah. Like you can, like that thing is on automation. You can kind of detach. You don't have to read comments. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you can just <laughs> sleep in your bed in cocoon and yeah. like judge me all you want. It's out there. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've like. Even now, when I go on TikTok sometimes and I I read the comments, but then when it's like when I when I've spent so much time making this mm. and then i post it and i'm i'm sitting there refreshing waiting for the comments and then some <laughs> something bad comes out that's gonna affect me a lot more than i've already created this schedule i had to get to a point yeah once it's out there once i i'm done like this had used to happen to me when i designed for clients i'll mm. design something mm. and whatever the client gives feedback i literally took it personally like that person mm. is like when when they say they don't like something <laughs> <laughs> they're saying they don't like me right mm. like that but then I, I had to get to a point where i had to completely detach myself from the design like once it's out it's out it's, it has nothing to do with me anymore mm. you know what i mean it's it yeah. might as well some might as well be something somebody else designed or something like that you know i think this is what i need to do like when i write <laughs> For me, this is my child. <laughs> I wrote this. <laughs> I sat down. I thought about it. I edited it. I, you know? Um, well, I don't do Canva anymore. I used to like put it in Canva. Blah, blah. I just have notes, screenshot posts for me now. Mm-hmm. But because it's easier, to be honest, than me thinking about design uh, of it. But yeah, I need to like detach from the words I'm writing. Yeah. I, I'm writing or write. Yeah. So I don't. Maybe it's that con- the controlling side of you, like of where course, yeah. you feel like you need to control the other drivers, like because mm-hmm. you know how sometimes like some parents they can't let their when their kid goes to college or something like that. It's hard for them to let go. Yes, <laughs> but the 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 content that you create in your post, it's like a kid going off to college. <laughs> you gotta let go. Yes, I need to be <laughs> like, like bye bye. <laughs> Go ahead, live your life. I'm like, I'm done paying your bills. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, I need I need to do that. You know what? It's also because I'm the oldest in my family, and I have like four uh, mm-hmm. siblings other than me. So, yeah, you're always so. being protective. Yeah. Uh, pr- protective? I'm over protective. I I, <laughs> I go to school. You know the mothers who go to school and fight. What are they called? Soccer moms? I don't know what they're called. But this is me. Yeah, I found out that last year. Oh, you go. <laughs> I was just, my, one of my brothers would be like, this and this happened. What? I'll be like, hello? What's happening in that school? <laughs> this is me. I'm like, you need to fight for yourself. Blah, blah, blah. You know, if you don't do that, I'll do it. Mm. You know? Got to the point where... Maybe that's like uh, some... Maybe that that's... Maybe that's more that... That's more of what you should work on more than the content and things like that is mm-hmm. is how to detach yourself from once you've created how to detach yourself from your creation oh, and, right. and believe that that thing is going to go out and do its job don't need to worry <laughs> you know about I mean? it. yes i <laughs> yeah. definitely know i also um i think because i love feedback too like when yeah. when I read something or like when I send something, I'm like, are you sure it doesn't have to be edited? That's what I do to my friends, you know. When I, I see what you mean, yeah. I'm like, is it okay? And they're like, this is how we felt about you. But you know, know what happens? Yeah. Once you detach yourself from it, mm-hmm. it's actually much easier to get feedback because what, this is what I used to do, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes like my clients will give me good feedback, 
like that's actually legit mm. but because i'm taking it so personally like i wasn't open to it. taking it no. right but what I'm, happened is when i started hiring designers and i would present their design to the clients mm. and then they, they give feedback and i i found myself actually sometimes agreeing with the client be like oh you're right like <laughs> we messed up on there and because it's it wasn't my yours, design yeah. i didn't really care <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right so so that exercise actually helped me kind of start detaching myself from my work how do you think i should do that just post and leave like for you you have the designers <laughs> what should i do because yeah. yeah maybe you 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 should um you should start looking at like critiques of other people's writing or something like that like reading reading critiques of what other people wrote mm. and see if you agree with it and then okay. i don't know it's like I, I, I guess I, do. I mean that that's one thing that helped but for social media i really just it was just a quantity thing the more the more abuse i got <laughs> the <laughs> easier secrecy. it became <laughs> <laughs> okay that <sighs> Okay. And also, like, sometimes it's this. Yeah. Sometimes, like, when I see those re feedbacks or something like that, mm. I just kind of have to, like, turn it off or, and sleep on it. Mm. And then the next day I come back, I'm not as emotional about it or something like that. Yeah. But don't you, when you do that, do you carry it all the way? Like, do you carry, when you sleep on it, when you say I'm sleeping on it, does that mean you're thinking about it all this time? Or do you actually do something to forget about it? Because sometimes when something worries Yeah, like I have to move on and do something else. But uh, yeah, you're right. It, it, when I see a comment like that, it'll mess up my day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... Like but I think that's part of the process. Like it's... I, I just think that it's kind of like working, going to the gym, right? Mm. Yes, when you first start, it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> your muscles going to hurt. But then, you know, you keep doing it over and over and... and you build that muscle and it, it gets to a point where it bothers you for like a minute and then it goes away. Okay. You know, I'll try to do that. It's a, it's, I think it's a muscle that you have to build, like just dealing with that. Yeah. Okay. And I, you know what? Don't feel like too bad because it's almost every creator that I know has to go through that. Okay. Th they have to go through that building that criticism muscle <laughs> where they're like, you know, they're just... uh, it doesn't bother them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Because just think about it. Like, Go ahead. <laughs> think about some movies that you see, like some of the critiques, like you see, like mm, just harsh. think about how those directors and screenwriters feel, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> and I want they, to be but a they have to build that. Yeah. I, I, you know, um, uh, one of the inspiring things that happened that want, wanted me to be a screenwriter mm -hmm. is a movie, a Sudanese movie. It's called You Will Die at 20. I recommend you watch it, of course, because <laughs> okay. it's a different culture and different everything. So, and it came out at a time where people were dying in Sudan and everything. And I loved it so much. And the director from the same city I live in, right? I mm -hmm. like my city, not live in, but it's my hometown, basically. So I got so obsessed with the movie and I was, it's not even, it's a short film, right? I got so obsessed with it. And also the, the author uh, of the shortest story is my favorite author that I've been obsessed with following and reading all his book, all his shortest stories. And then they, it's just like a dream that came true to me. I felt like I was that director or that actress or whatever. And I was like, you know, uh, it's just, it's the whole thing was so amazing. And for me, it was like a miracle. I like, it was, I didn't even watch the movie yet because it was on, um, you know, the festivals. Um, what was oh, it? Yeah. I think it was at Venice and uh, somewhere in Egypt. Like, I um, don't remember the name of the best at this moment. I forget names. I'm so sorry if any of the creators are watching. I don't think they will be watching me, but I'm sorry if I forgot anything. So what happened is I read a critique and I was so upset I didn't even watch the movie yet. I, I, I'm just seeing oh, it because, winning. I'm uh, seeing it winning. Yeah. I'm seeing it. I'm proud of the whole thing, yeah. the actress, the director, the yeah. story and how they take the screenplay. And the director also wrote this, this the, took the shortest story and wrote the screenplay, right? And I was so upset about the critique. You know, I was like, and then because Sudan 
there's a lot of um, colorism behind everything. So I'm like, okay, is this an actual critique or is it just because it's a Sudanese movie? I was like, mm-hmm. I was getting aggressive, mm-hmm. you know, and I read it online. So, and I can't even talk to the person who wrote it. I just carry it with me yeah, all day thinking about it. <laughs> like, what is he doing? <laughs> Coming at my movie. You imagine like the writer and the director. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not the director. I'm not the writer. I'm just, you know, a fan who did not even watch it. Well, I got to watch it and I got to love it. And some of the things he said were right. Okay. But mm. the movie, nevertheless, was really good. A good one, in my opinion. Mm. But yeah, um, that's why I asked. There's you. always going to be critiques. When, oh. when I saw, I, I, I saw this one video of, on YouTube of American. There was this guy from Hawaii mm. who sang. He, his father just passed away and he, he was singing. And it was just so, it like literally brought tears to my eyes, just his singing. Mm. Because he was so connected to it. And, and like all the judges were crying. Mm. And then I saw the, the views and there were like 2,000 dislikes. <laughs> And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> like who can possibly like this, like this video, right? So I think there's always going to be mm. people like that, right? And it's, and, and actually, like, it's, I actually make it a habit to go on YouTube and read those comments because sometimes I see, like, I feel terrible because, like, you know, there'll be some actress or something like that. Mm. And, like, they're, they're just being so harsh, like, about, about everything, their looks, their weight, like, uh, yeah. just uh, about everything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I, if I was that actress, like, I would, yeah. you know, this, this would devastate me or something like that. I do. But the I just same. feel like people, people who get, get there, mm. like, they've learned to deal with it. They've learned to be completely okay with it. And I, I just think that that's actually, Mm-hmm. probably part of building your confidence right like mm, it's to grow a thicker no skin. matter what anybody says i can just brush it off because hey maybe that's true and it's kind mm. of funny or what, yeah. <laughs> whatever right like yeah. you I've, know i've seen an actress someone said she's egyptian someone said she looks i don't know they said a very mean comment and when she came to the interview she said you know what in that video i did look like this when i read it i cr- i laughed because what was i doing the lights were behind me i looked like so you know i'm so skinny yeah. the lights behind me i scared them you know and she was laughing about it i was like oh my gosh and i, I loved yeah. her even more you know uh but yeah. to have to be that uh, you know so uh, it probably required a lot of work to get there and like uh, i'm sure that person just didn't get there overnight right no, no. So no, no, no. it's part of build, like I said, building that muscle. So. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think, I think I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way because I've been, you know, changing places, schools, and getting bullied for stupid stuff. But I think what's happening to me is um, this is the first time I'll be sharing my writings after keeping it for so basically all my life, right? And you know, sometimes I think of an think idea. of it as um, you you can shift your perspective to a way that like oh I'm excited about doing this like bring it on, okay. you know like I I took a break from Instagram for like a year, mm-hmm. and every week I would look and design a carousel or something like that, and I, in my mind I'm like I have to create a masterpiece because mm-hmm. if I cre- if I post something bad people are gonna be like I knew it I knew someone was like a one hit one he, <laughs> I knew he didn't have it and then like I mm-hmm. all this judgment thing so like. I would try to create something and then try to create something. It's like, oh, this is not good enough, right? Mm. And the more pressure I put myself, put put on myself, it go, the worse it got it. And that's literally why I didn't post for a year. Mm. Because like every week I'm like, oh, no. Every week I'm like, no, that's not good enough, right? And me. then finally what I did was I decided to just repost an old post that, that was like terrible. Mm. Uh, it was like an old video <laughs> that was like recorded in Zoom. It was terrible quality. I just posted it mm. and, and, and I felt good because I'm like, all right, bring it on. <laughs> bring on all the criticism, everything it's now. So old anyways, right? yeah. 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 So it, think of it like that where it, it, it's like it's an exercise for you to like, okay, I can take this. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, this, is, this is great. Do you, think, do you think we think this way because we are somewhat how empathic? We see other people. Yeah, I probably, yeah. You see other people getting bullied and or like many yeah. things happen to them. Yeah. So, yeah. Just get because I know somebody who's naturally can like brush these kind of stuff up and uh, they don't really care. 
but they're also the type of person that you know when 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 you see somebody struggling or something like that they're not it doesn't bother them <laughs> you know, like like i i knew a guy who like i i have terrible i cannot fire people oh like in my company like i i couldn't fire somebody for years mm. because <laughs> even though i should have <laughs> because i felt so bad like i just i i you know i i care I about the that same person. problem I, yeah, I have the same problem. Not just, but then I know somebody mm-hmm. who's like, "Oh, let me do it." <laughs> like uh, <laughs> that person actually loves firing person people. <laughs> is that somebody, Gigi? Because I feel like it's Gigi. <laughs> um, Gigi is also one of those people that could be like, "Oh yeah, I'll do it." Mm-hmm. Like, or when we have to give a bad news to clients, it's like, "No, well, I'll do it." <laughs> right? So I can give bad news. Like, but, yeah. like uh, I'll. Fi- I think. I think I like this. I like what we said. I like that. I all I need is to build a muscle, and you know, I just have one last question. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think I need to focus on one area of writing and forget about the rest? Because I feel like I'm all over the place. Well, I think one thing you should do mm-hmm. is detach your writing project, long-term writing projects, mm. from. Your social, like, I think you should treat social media content as just putting your thoughts out there on a daily basis, right? Whatever thoughts you come. Oh, yeah. And then there's going to be stuff that you also work on. Like, if you're working on a screenplay or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. You're working on that mm-hmm. long term. But then always keep this documenting process going on social media. And don't, this also gives you the kind of like, okay, you're going to be okay not being perfect because your perfectionism is going in here okay. <laughs> in your screenplay or in your in your short story or your book, right? Okay. And like keep social media as like... Because remember, whatever you post on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, or not YouTube, but all those other social media, nobody's going to see it after two weeks. Mm. <laughs> There's no point investing your energy into making something perfect that no one's going to see after two weeks. Okay. You know what I mean? But on on your on the stuff that you are working on, long term projects, that's where you should put Everything. those energy into it. Yeah. Okay. I was just trying to figure out how can I use my social media for my screenwriting, but I don't think that's possible. I think what I need to focus on. Is no, just... I think you should use it to put your thoughts out there. Okay. And attract other like-minded people okay. that agree with that that are on board with your ideas and Networking. your thoughts. And, you mean? Okay. And what what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically attract people that are like you, that are like-minded. That's kind of what happened to me, without even me trying. What we talked about in the beginning, just do your yeah. thing, and then things would come to yeah. you, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> I think that's like one of today's outcomes. Yeah. 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 Right? And and do do not think about, you know, like oh, I want to hit this n- number follower. Like, just take all of that out and just focus on the writing and just, mm-hmm. you know, okay. the pro- the process of writing. Yeah. Okay. Not the outcome. Not and the outcome will automatically come eventually. <laughs> that's that's just a bonus. It's the cherry on top. Just. <laughs> The bonus of hard work or like try to enjoy. Now, I don't know if I will be enjoying the process, but I know I will try. No, you should enjoy the process. Right? Should you enjoy should enjoy it. even the, even the, the trolls, like bring it on all the criticism. <laughs> you should enjoy that. You okay. should enjoy the whole thing and enjoy writing and enjoy putting your thoughts out there. Okay. Let me write this down. Because <laughs> I didn't think I should enjoy it. I thought I'd be like hardworking, hardworking. Um, I think you have to in- learn to enjoy the hard work. Oh, like, I think you said this. For example, before. I used to wake up at like at my old job, not my old job, but <laughs> when when I was in New York, when we were when we had our office, mm-hmm. we would I would wake up at like four and I would go to the office by five. Like I would go do yoga and then go to the office by five and. Okay. When I when I'm walking in the street at like four thirty, like I'm like yeah I'm doing this like I I felt proud of myself for mm-hmm. doing something that 
most people can't do, right? Mm -hmm. Like most, like most people are just sleeping, you know, in their comfy bed right now. But I'm waking up early, and I'm, you know, mm. uh, I'm going to yoga, and I'm, you know, <laughs> doing all um, these things. Yeah, yeah, and that almost made me feel like Superman or something like that, right? And it made me feel like I have a superpower or something like that. So I, I, I think you can take. You know what my my first job was? I worked at this place called Kumon, mm. where I was grading math papers. And my job was to just basically, you know, students turn in their paper for me to look at the the answers and just match up and just grade them, right? Mm. Or, like it was grading paper was my job. It was okay. the most boring job, right? Mm. But I turned it into like a competition. I memorized all the answer sheets, mm. so that I have to go back and forth. And I was like, I was so fast. So I I was grading three times faster than any of the other graders that worked there. Okay. And made, made so like, yeah, you no matter what it is, I think you can enjoy it. You can learn to enjoy it. Like you 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 can't always like that. This is what I always say: you can't always do what you love, but you can learn to love everything you do. And I don't know if you, like you're, I don't know if you know uh, Nora Nora Epstein. She's a writer, I guess. But she has this quote. She says, um, "If you're not happy doing the dishes, you're not happy. Uh, if you can't, if you can't be happy doing the dishes, you can't be happy. Like period. So, mm. we happiness is like not going to come from yeah, exactly, mm. something like that. I guess. <laughs> I agree with that because yeah. I was happy in my poorest states." Because I decided yeah. to be like, no one. When my when my special said we gonna start dialysis because the per, my family were not like, we were going for uh, transplant first. She was like giving me the bad news, right? It was the bad news. I said, "Yay, must do it." And she's like, "Why are you excited?" I said, "Because this is mm -hmm. it's not the transplant, but it's gonna be make me function like." functioning i can't function right now so anything that's gonna make me uh get out of bed is welcomed and i'm excited about it yeah. and because when i was thinking about it because i was in medicine it's a new process that i'll be learning but not as a doctor as a patient and that's what i did i even like well it's like a perspective shift it's yeah. a perspective shift yeah. and i even did it like which is something i don't know if you have in your ass it's a home dialysis which you just do it at home and you prepare everything yourself as a patient you don't have to depend mm -hmm. on the nurse coming or anything even taught my brother how to do it you know it was like like a, a nighttime activity <laughs> um it just happened, you know. It was was it painful? Yeah. Was it like annoying that I wasn't working when I was like in my twenties and everyone is like starting their careers and yeah. I didn't even attend my graduation. Think of it like that. Yeah. This whole process of you putting out your writing out there, think of it exactly like that. It's you're learning, you're mm -hmm. learning to write, you're learning more about yourself yes. through writing. Yes. Like if you put the focus on there, I think you can learn to enjoy it. Yeah. You know? Like Seriously, thank you. Because just having this talk, um, it just made me like, it's like thinking out loud. And you were just connecting the dots. That's why I said way. do the podcast. <laughs> because when you just do a podcast and you have conversations with somebody, yeah. all of these things that are in your mind will automatically come out. Great. I like you to, might not even know. Yeah. I, I will do the podcast. You said 20 episodes. I can invite you or you, yes, you took I'll be this on out. Your podcast. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Finger crossed. Okay. I'll invite you to my podcast. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your wonderful conversation. Thank you, Sai. Being open with us and have a great rest of the week have a great rest of the week everyone and i'll see you all next week thank you son cheers bye, bye.